is little doubt that the Indus Valley civilization is one of the most advanced of ancient times, easily rivaling the civilizations of Mesopotamia or ancient Egypt. What's more, it was extremely widespread, stretching from the northwest regions of India into Pakistan and northeast Afghanistan. This ancient civilization dates back to around 4000 BC, although some researchers suggest much earlier dates, even as far back as the end of the last ice age, approximately 10 to 12,000 years ago. What is known for sure is that these farming settlements soon developed into small towns and villages. By 2500 BC, several metropolis-like cities were established and the entire region was fully urbanized. The people of the Indus Valley were highly efficient. They were skilled at metallurgy and agriculture, and there are even suggestions of organized authorities and governments who intricately planned the cities and the industries of the region. They were made up of solid baked brick houses, many of which had separate bathrooms leading to advanced drainage systems. At their peak, these cities would have been home to as many as 40,000 people. Then, around 2000 BC, while thriving, something changed. The entire region went into a sudden decline, and by 1800 BC, the Indus Valley civilization was essentially no more. Although there have been many theories put forward to explain this abrupt downturn, such as flooding, climate change, or even excessive harvesting and use of the land. There are also no solid explanations for why such large cities were suddenly abandoned seemingly overnight. Two of those once thriving metropolises, Mohenjo-daro and Harappa were discovered in the 1920s in what is now modern-day Pakistan. And the ruins of these ancient cities offered a further glimpse into the advances of the Indus civilization. There were clear signs of organization and forethought in the city layouts with sophisticated public sewers, drains and even public drinking water. There was a mixture of residential areas and what would be the equivalent of industrial complexes for manufacturing and trade. British researcher and writer David Davenport spent more than a decade researching Mohenjo-daro and its sudden demise. He would write of his findings in the book Atomic Destruction in 2000 BC. Ultimately, he would offer that a nuclear weapon strike on the city at the end of an ancient war had brought the Indus Valley civilization to an end. And he would put forward a compelling argument for this apparently outlandish conclusion. Davenport discovered over 40 skeletons of people that appeared to have simply dropped dead in the streets. Some of these skeletons even appeared to be holding hands, suggesting they had died instantly and without warning. Even more remarkable, several of these skeletal remains returned extremely high radioactive readings, so high in fact that Davenport compared them to readings taken at Nagasaki and Hiroshima in Japan following the atomic blast that ended the Second World War. In fact, Davenport would state that everything he had found in Mohenjo-daro matched exactly the environment in the Japanese cities following their destruction. Incidentally, over three decades after Davenport's discoveries in 2002, another British archaeologist, Paul Barn, discovered further skeletal remains. Several were found contorted in such a way that suggested they had been in agonizing pain in their final moments. We might ask, why had these skeletons not decomposed completely? And why had they been left in the first place? Why had they not been eaten by scavengers or predators? Davenport would also discover evidence of vitrification having taken place in the ancient city. This is where rocky or sandy ground has become heated so quickly to a temperature of around 1500 degrees Celsius before cooling rapidly. The end result of this process is a crystallized glass-like substance. Davenport identified the epicenter of what he believed to be a nuclear blast with a radius of approximately 50 yards. 
He also noted that bricks of houses that face this epicentre were melted on that side only, another sign that a momentous explosion had occurred. What is perhaps interesting is that ancient Sanskrit texts, which are regarded as historical fact by those who follow them, speak of gods with terrific but deadly weapons. And one particular account in the Mahabharata tells of a great war, the Kurachitra War, where such destructive weapons were used. One of these weapons is described as being able to sweep away steeds and elephants as if they were nothing but dry leaves and destroy entire legions at a time. Another was said to obliterate anything it touched, leaving the land around where it struck lifeless and barren. Were the discoveries made at Mohenjo-daro proof of a nuclear war thousands of years in the past, perhaps even the Kurachitra War wrote about in the ancient texts? If we look at further lines from the Mahabharata, we can easily see why these could be interpreted as describing the use of nuclear weapons and the subsequent fallout. One such line, for example, reads that a white-hot, incandescent column of smoke and flame that was a thousand times brighter than the sun rose in infinite brilliance and reduced the city to ashes. Or another tells us how water boiled and horses and war chariots were burned by the thousands. Yet another states that the corpses of the fallen were mutilated by the terrible heat so that they no longer looked like human beings at all. Further verses describe clearly how people's hair and nails fell out, or how all food became infected and no longer edible. Even pottery would simply shatter of its own accord. From a modern-day perspective, these ancient writings very much sound like descriptions of nuclear weapons and the fallout from a nuclear blast. It is also interesting to note that a site in southwest Egypt, near the border with Libya, also shows very similar vitrification to that discovered by Davenport. And what's more, this potential explosion appears to have taken place around the same time as the one in Mohenjo-daro. This could suggest that any potential war that took place in the Indus Valley region was much more far-reaching than we might think. So, is it really possible that a nuclear explosion occurred in Mohenjo-daro almost 4,000 years ago, and is this the reason the city was abandoned so suddenly? While the argument is very compelling, there are several problems with this mind-blowing scenario. If these ancient cities had been inhabited by thousands of people, which they undoubtedly were, why have there been only 44 skeletons discovered? Surely these skeletal remains would have been piled high. It could be possible that there was some kind of prior warning of an impending attack that caused the vast majority of these citizens to flee the city. Once more, if we imagine the situation from a modern-day perspective, it makes perfect sense that people would leave their homes and move to a safer environment during times of conflict. There are other issues, though, with the nuclear blast theory. Perhaps most puzzling is why were other locations of the Indus Valley civilization abandoned around the same time? Did they fear similar attacks would be unleashed on their cities and simply abandon them? Or might the entire civilization have felt the ripple effects of the apparent annihilation of one of its main hubs and went into a gradual decline? We might also expect to find other remains of nuclear weaponry in the region, as well as where such weapons were manufactured and stored. Perhaps such relics remain buried awaiting discovery. Or maybe this potential nuclear weapon was delivered in a much different way than we know of today. After all, if we accept that these ancient writings are historical fact and not merely legend, we are talking about a battle between the gods. Perhaps most interesting of all, if there is any truth to the claims of nuclear weapons in antiquity, might there also be truth about the real flesh and blood nature of these gods? Did they really rule over the Indus Valley region? And did they bring the civilization, for all intents and purposes, to a sudden and drastic, if unintentional, end? It is worth noting that the writings of the Mahabharata are not the only ancient texts that appear to describe the use of nuclear weapons in ancient times. 
The Bible seems to describe a similar nuclear attack on the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. These verses describe the cities being destroyed instantly, with all those living there perishing. All vegetation and land was left smoldering and ruined, and dense smoke rose into the air, remaining in the sky for some time. Finally, perhaps it is worth noting the following response from Robert Oppenheimer, known as the father of the atomic bomb, and who was known to study ancient Hindu and Vedic texts. When asked after the first nuclear bomb had been detonated if this was indeed the first nuclear explosion on the planet, he responded, yes, in modern times. <laughs>